Chapter 3 Man, you should not have left so early last night, Brendan said as he strapped on his bulletproof vest. Bree was interested in you. What in the world would I do with a billionaire's daughter? Jesse strapped on his own vest and closed his locker. Um, you could marry her and inherit millions. Unlike you, I hold no desire to marry a woman simply for her money. I want a real woman, one who will go to church with me and be a partner, not one whose idea of a full day is spending thousands on a new handbag and a pair of shoes. Brendan slammed his locker shut and fell into step beside Jessie. You don't even know that she's like that. She bought a round of drinks for a group of men she didn't even know. Not exactly frugal in my book. Brendan shook his head. Sometimes I don't understand you at all, my friend. The feeling's mutual. Jessie was cut off from saying anything further as they arrived in the briefing room. The other men were already gathered around the table. All right, there's a foreign dignitary in town today, and it's our job to protect him. We will pick him up at the airport, and we will take him to the convention center. Once there, Jesse, you will set up in the lobby. I want you to have eyes on anything that might be able to have eyes on the meeting. Brendan and Carter, you will stay close to the dignitary. The rest of us will be running sweeps on the center. Any questions? Jesse glanced at his fellow SWAT members, but as usual, Patrick had made the instructions clear enough that no one had any issues with them. Let's mount up. As Jesse followed the other men out to the SWAT armored vehicle, he prayed silently for their safety. It was a prayer he said every time they rode out in hopes they would all return in the evening. So, Brendan, you get a date with the lovely Bree Carter? Cam asked. Brendan smiled and shook his head. Turns out she was more interested in our silent, broody friend here. He jerked his head at Jesse. But he says he has no use for a billionaire's daughter. Ah, uh, you could at least see what she's like, man, Jared said. Just because she's rich doesn't mean she's not worth knowing. I mean, she was definitely easy on the eyes. Maybe not, but the ones I've met haven't been very deep. You know I don't care about the latest trends. We all know that, Jesse, Carter teased. It's pretty obvious by the way you dress every day. Ha ha, Jesse shot back. He might not be up on the latest trends, but he wasn't completely inept when it came to fashion. Jared's right, though, man, Patrick said. I might never have married Tanya if I hadn't given her a chance. She was the sporty jock when I met her, and I thought we would have nothing in common, but her athleticism was just a part of her. It didn't define her. Jesse supposed they were right. He was making a judgment of Bree without knowing her. I see your point. If I come across her again, I promise I will at least get to know her. That's what I'm talking about. Brendan clapped a hand on his shoulder. The vehicle rolled to a stop. Okay, guys, let's keep eyes open as we enter the airport. We've heard there might be some attacks on this guy's life. Heads nodded around the vehicle, and Jesse touched the cross that hung around his neck. Keep us safe, Lord. Then the door opened and they filed out. LaGuardia Airport was packed as usual, and the team kept a close eye out for any suspect behavior or out-of-the-ordinary events. Patrick led the way to gate three and spoke with the agent. The agent nodded and led them into the secure area so they could meet the dignitary as soon as he disembarked from the plane. The dignitary was a tall, stern-looking Russian, and Jesse could understand why he might need extra guarding with the recent Russian sentiment flooding the country. You have him? The words came from an unassuming, muscular man Jesse assumed to be a sky marshal. Yes, sir, we do. Patrick stepped forward. Mr. Gregrinko, if you'll come with us. The Russian nodded and fell into place behind Patrick. Cam and Carter took up the front flank. Jared and Brendan fell into the back flank, and Jesse took his position at the far back. Like a well-oiled machine, the group made their way back through the airport and out to the armored truck. Jesse was relieved when the door closed and they were all safe inside. 
One transport down, and only three more to go. I really wish you had picked someone easier, Bree said to Ariel as they sat inside the Java hut. They'd been there nearly an hour, but no Jesse. If I picked someone too easy, it wouldn't be a challenge. Ariel sipped her tall, skinny mocha with no whip. But I will agree that just sitting here is boring. Her eyes lit up. I know. Kate is in town filming today. Why don't we go have lunch with him? It might inspire you. A blush spread across Bree's cheeks and she ducked her head. Cade Sinclair had been her longtime crush for as long as she could remember. Do you think he'll have lunch with us? Ariel shrugged. Sure he will. I'm his little sister, remember? She tapped out a quick text on her phone and the girls stared at it, waiting for a reply. A moment later, it dinged. Ariel scanned the message and smiled. He has lunch in 15 minutes and he will meet us at Laporte. Bree nodded. Laporte was an upscale eatery in the heart of New York City. All the young, trendy people wanted to get in there, but it was generally reserved for the likes of celebrities. Though Bree could probably have gotten in with her last name, Cade was a shoe in The girls finished their coffees and headed out to catch a cab. The bistro wasn't far, but Jimmy Choo shoes were not made for long walks. Thankfully, they had no trouble getting a cab, which probably had a lot to do with Ariel's miniskirt and toned legs. Bree had no idea how she wasn't freezing. The air had cooled considerably in the last week, and Bree chose to wear leather pants rather than short skirts. The girls climbed into the cab and exited ten minutes later at the curb of Laporte. May I help you? The hostess asked as they entered. She wore an immaculately pressed white shirt and a bored expression. Her blonde hair was pinned up in an elaborate updo. Yes, I'm Ariel Sinclair. We're meeting Cade Sinclair for lunch. The hostess cocked an eyebrow as if she didn't believe her but she glanced down at her clipboard. I see a reservation for Cade Sinclair, but he only made a reservation for two. Well, we're his guests. He probably just forgot Bree was coming too. This is Bree Carter, you know, daughter of Phil Carter. The hostess looked unimpressed. Look, just go ask him. Tell him his sister and Bree are here. Ariel crossed her arms and shot an unpleasant glare in the hostess's direction. Give me a moment and I will. The hostess spun and walked away. Wow, can you believe the nerve of some people? Ariel shook her head and ran a hand through her dark locks. You didn't tell him I was coming too? Bree hissed. This was not good. He would think she was just some lame tag-along. Relax, I didn't say anything because I assumed he would know you were with me. We're like always together. Bree shook her head, no longer sure this was a good idea. A moment later, the hostess reappeared. I'm sorry for the confusion. If you'll come with me. She led them towards the back where Cade sat in a far booth. Ariel, Bree, he said when they sat down. Hey, Cade, how is the shoot going today? Ariel slid in first and Bree scooted next to her. He shrugged. Meh, you know, it's work. What are you girls up to today? Bree didn't like the way he called them girls as if they were 16 and still in high school instead of in their mid-twenties. Lunch with my favorite brother and then off for some shopping, I suppose. Ariel picked up the menu and scanned it. Mmm, the brioche looks good. Bree waited for Ariel to steer the conversation to her so she could contribute something meaningful, but she never did, and Cade seemed content to check out the other patrons in the restaurant. Bree's heart sank as she studied her own menu. What would it take for Cade to notice her? The waitress appeared a moment later and took their order. 
And still, Kate and Ariel seemed content to focus solely on themselves. Ariel raised her phone for a selfie and then jumped on her Snapchat. Bree would have to speak for herself. What's the role you're playing now? Kate pulled his eyes from something across the restaurant to look at her. Huh? Your role, what is it? Oh, you know, the usual. He shrugged and returned his attention to something over her shoulder. Bree turned to see what he was looking at and sighed as a group of women came into view. All of them wore low-cut shirts and sported much more cleavage than Bree would ever be able to. Maybe she was just fooling herself, or maybe she would just have to try harder to get his attention. She tried again. When is it going to be released? His eyes reverted to hers, but just for a moment. Um, a year, I guess? Bree rolled her eyes. Talking to him was like trying to pry open a door with a pencil. After lunch, Ariel hugged Cade goodbye. Thanks for letting us eat with you, big brother. Sure, anytime, he said, checking his watch. I gotta run now, though. Well, that was a total waste, Bree said when he was gone. He barely even looked at me, and you were no help at all. Ariel shrugged. I said I would get you in front of him. The rest is your job. Bree thought about that on the ride back to her apartment. Maybe a makeover was in order. It seemed Cade was attracted to women with a few more assets than Bree had. See you later, Ariel called as Bree climbed out of the cab. Ariel's place was a few blocks up. Bree waved and watched the cab drive away before she entered her building. When she entered, surprise flooded her to see her father waiting for her in the living room. We need to talk, Bree. A sick sensation erupted in her stomach at the look on his face. He did not seem happy. I got the visa bill in this morning. Bree's breath caught as she tried to remember what she had purchased recently. There had been that dress and, of course, a new bag to go with it. It was over $10,000 this month, Bree. 10000 She hadn't thought she had spent that much. And I can't keep paying these bills, he continued. So I think it's time you thought about getting a job. Bree's eyes bulged and her mouth dropped open. She leaned back and crossed her slender arms as she regarded her father. But I don't want to get a job. He matched her position and narrowed his eyes. And I'm tired of funding your every whim. You are 27 years old, Bree. Most people your age have full-time jobs. Bree pouted her full pink lips. Well, most people don't have a billionaire father who owns the largest investment company in New York. If they did, they wouldn't have jobs either. Her father shook his head. He was still distinguished looking, even at nearly 50. There were white streaks in his dark hair, but Bree thought it made him look more debonair. And he always wore an Armani suit. Those flattered just about everyone, but as her father worked out with a personal trainer, they fit him to a T. I was too easy on you after your mother died. I should have instilled better values in you. Taught you the value of a hard-earned dollar. I didn't get where I've gotten by riding on anyone's coattail. So you have two choices. You can get a job, or you can get married. But I'm cutting your money off at the end of the month. A month? Bree flung her arms out to the side. How am I supposed to find a man who will marry me in a month? She thought of her bet with Ariel and wondered if she might actually have to go through with marrying Jesse. You could start with getting a job, her father said. I just said one or the other. This is so unfair. No, what's unfair is you thinking this world revolves around you. I should have done this a long time ago, but I thought you would see my example and do something with your life. I guess I was wrong. Oh, and by the way, the cutoff includes this apartment. 
So if you aren't married or don't have a steady job, you'll also need to find a new place to live. Bree's eyes widened even further. You would kick your only daughter out on the streets? Her father chuckled. I doubt seriously you would be homeless. You have plenty of wealthy friends who could take you in for a week or two, right? Bree had wealthy friends, but she wasn't sure any of them would let her crash at their place if she didn't have money. Maybe Ariel, but even then Ariel wouldn't let her stay long. She liked to go out and spend money too much. If Bree didn't have any, she would just be a burden. Are you figuring out your friends may only be your friends because of your money? No, Bree protested, though that was exactly what she was thinking. I was just trying to figure out what skills I might have. This is New York, Dad. I can't just waltz in somewhere and get a job. Then you start at the bottom like the rest of us did. The bottom, of course. Working at a coffee shop certainly felt like the bottom to Bree. But maybe she could make the most of this punishment and kill two birds with one stone. If she could get hired at the coffee place Jessie frequented, she could work on winning him over while satisfying her father. And after all, how hard could it be to make coffee? What do you mean I have no skills? Bree stared at the young manager who couldn't be much older than she was. I have an iced half-calf ristretto venti four-pump sugar-free cinnamon dolce soy skinny latte at least twice a week. The manager just stared at her. Just because you order the most obnoxious drink on the menu doesn't mean you know how to make them. Bree bit her lip. He was right. She had no idea how to make that drink or any other drink. But she needed a job. And she really needed this job for everything to play out right. Look, I'll make you a deal. One, I promise I will learn how to make these drinks. I may not have many skills, but I can read and comprehend, and I have a good memory. Two, I will post on my social media pages that I will be here every day serving drinks. I promise this place will be flooded with customers. The manager, whose name was Matt, appeared to consider her offer. I'll give you one week. You need to know the drinks by then, and I better see an increase in customers. Bree smiled and relief flooded her. I will, and you will. Believe me, this will be good for both of us.